Hey gamers, today it's time to look at the Fresco Big Box Edition. Let's check it out. In the game Fresco, you are going to be playing one of these little painters, any color here, red, blue, green, and yellow. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to put your guys over here on the wake up track, put them on the scoring track over here, and of course put them on the happy and sad, the theater here. Um, I have them laying down just so you can see them better, but you're supposed to have them stand up. But because it's just better that you can see them this way, I have them laying down. You're also going to get five little apprentices of your color who are also going to come in handy in the game. You will also be getting some player shields and not just one but two player shields. Now it's really neat the player shields are to turn uh, you can locate them by the color here so this is blue yellow, green, and red. It's even like that for the small player shields as well. I think that is so cool. You have personal player shields. On the back of each player shield, the small one basically lets you know what actions you can take in order. And then this one here lets you know what paints you can mix. Now this one's a permanent shield. It'll never pop up. It's going to keep things like all your paints and your money behind it. By the way, everyone starts with one of each color paint, the prime colors here, yellow, blue, and red. They're also going to start with things, they call them tailors, I'm just going to refer to them as money or bucks or coins here. So you start off with $12 in coins there, or tailors as they say, and that's how you're going to start the game. Now behind this player shield here is actually going to go your little player board here, which I'll get to in a minute. So what you're going to do is first off you're going to determine who goes first, second, third, or fourth. Because they're going to pick, uh, determine what time they're going to wake up in the morning and put their character in that location. So uh, how that's decided the first time, you just pick. Okay. After that, however, the let's say the victory track is right here. Well, blue gets to pick first since he is last. Then green, then yellow, and last red. And so what you have to determine is what time you want to wake up. Now the earlier you wake up in the morning, the more you are guaranteed the number one spot. That means you get to pick which of these paint tiles you want from the market. You get to pick which of these tiles you want to paint. You get to be first in everything. So you definitely get the jump on everyone else by going first. A lot of good things with going first. However, there are bad things with going earlier. The earlier you wake up, if you see here, they have little happy and sad faces here. And what this means is the earlier you wake up, the sadder your people will be. So if Red was here, he woke up at 5, his people would go down on the happiness track. So we have this little theater here, he would go down 1, 2, 3, and happiness, and that would be bad. Let's say uh, Green went down 2, Blue went down 1, oh he didn't go down any because he woke up at 7, and then 8 o'clock you get a plus 1. Oh, yay! Also, in the market, things are very expensive in the morning. I have to pay four coins for each paint tile I want. However, at eight o'clock in the morning, it goes down three, two, one. You get to pay one coin for each one. Now, the reason last place isn't good is because, well, you'll get, you're getting whatever's left, and it may not be stuff you want. You may, all the t uh, tiles that yellow wanted to paint may already have been painted by the time it's your turn, and there may be no moves left for you. So going last isn't always good. Uh, going for it first though does have its benefit and its distractions there. So uh, as the game goes on, like I said, whoever's last place will go first on picking when they, what time they will wake up. Now in the game, while you're scoring victories, one, uh, two pawns cannot share the same victory space there. So you need to either decide to go above or below that person. Now, why would you want to take away a point from you? Well, again, like I said, maybe you want to. Maybe Blue wants to stay last place so he can pick what time he wakes up again. So there's an advantage for being last in the game, as oddly as that sounds. So let's all go. Let me look, look through this. The happiness track here. Uh, your people, your little apprentices get happy if they get to sleep in or they get sad if they have to wake up early. 
and the sadder they get, it's not good. So if we look here, let's say this was the track here. Well, red is really sad. He's got a minus one. You see there's two minus ones here. The lower he gets, he's gonna start losing apprentices. Right now, I'm right here, I have to lose one of my apprentices. That gives me one less action in the round. That is not good. And if I go down here, I'm gonna lose two apprentices. Yikes! But however, if I'm someone like yellow, I'm gonna gain an apprentice. As you see, they have these neutral colored apprentices that will go uh, in your, uh, with your apprentices and it will count like an extra action. Now, you see there's two pluses here. That doesn't mean you'll get to take someone else's. You, uh, that means, if, like for me, if I had lost two red, I could go up here and gain my two red back. And if I stayed up in there, maybe I could get my bonus apprentice as well. That would be really nice. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's how the uh, little happiness track goes. And as you see, each color donates, you'll start in the middle there. Now, uh, all of our paint cubes are here that we'll get, but let's go into our movements. Now, behind your player shield, you're going to take all of your apprentices, your five apprentices, you're going to put the, place them on any ones of these uh, choices here, and those are going to be your actions in the game. Now, you're going to hide this from people, and then when the time comes, you're going to reveal your small player shield and show them what your actions are. So, this is kind of hidden for a short time and then revealed when the game starts. So, let's go through these. First one is going to market. However many people you put here, which can be up to three, determines how many paint tiles you may buy at the marketplace. Now at the marketplace, there are several paint tiles. They're all face down here. You'd shuffle them around, and then I randomly uh, dealt them out here. And we have market stall one, two, and three. As you see, three has the most, one has anything. Well, why would I want to visit one? You can only, all your guys can only visit one of those three stalls. Let's say red picked three people. And they said, hmm, do I want to go over here? I got three things to buy, so I want to go here or here to buy as much. But if I went over in one, I'd only get to buy two. However, look, that's three red paints. That's a lot of red paint. That may be worth it. And look, here's a green. That's a really rare paint. You usually have to mix to get that paint. So it's not always the smallest one will get ignored and the biggest one will get chosen. A lot of times you have to determine what types of paint you need at that moment and what's the best type of deal. As you see, there are no three paint tiles over here. Now, once you pay for it, of course, determining this track where you woke up determines how much you pay per paint tile. Then you're going to cash it in, get your paint tiles down here, whatever colors you just bought, and that will be your turn. Now, and the next one, you can paint in the cathedral. And of course, however many princes you have here, determine whether you can paint one, two, or three of the tiles here. So how you would do that, let's say this time it's yellow's turn and they got to go first and they got two, they put two in the cathedral choice thing. So they can put them out, let's say they put them out here and one over here. Now, of course, you need to have the paint listed on that tile in order to take that tile. And uh, if you do that, as you see, it reveals a little portion of this beautiful, there's a beautiful painting underneath this. Now, uh, just to let you know, there's a nude guy and girl right there. It's kind of blurry in the nethers and hairs covering over the top, so nothing too bad there, really. But it's really, really a beautiful painting. Now, let's say I had all three of these colors. I, I'd throw them back into the pot here. I'd paint this. I'd flip it over. Well, for my effort, I'm gonna gain one green paint cube, so I'd add this to my behind my player shield, and now I have some income. Now, this is one tailor, or one buck, basically, uh, per round. So at the, every round, I'm going to gain an extra penny here. So as you see, the more that you paint, the more income you're going to get. So you won't always have to be, you know, hurting for money. Now, there's one other person here, as you see, this is the bishop. And the bishop hangs out right here at first. Now, if the bishop happens to be around where you're at, let's say yellow was uh, going to paint here. If the bishop's right next to you, you get two additional victory points. So here it says seven victory points, but because the bishop's next to me, I have nine victory points there. Now, for paying one tower or one coin here, you can actually move the bishop any, you know, one space in any direction. So for instance, let's say I paid this coin and I moved the bishop on my space and then I painted. Why would I want to do that? Because he would be worth three additional victory points on top of that, because the bishop is so excited he gets to be around you 
uh, while you're painting. The closer he is, the more victory points you will have. The third action you can do, if you're just hurting on money, like I said, maybe you can't paint and you need money to buy more paints. Uh, either because you woke up too early or you just bought a lot of paint. Either way, you can send some of your apprentices, one, two, or three, to the portrait making shop. And so let's say Green sent two there. Well, they would get three coins for every apprentice they sent. So that's six extra coins there. That's six extra bucks for Green that may come in handy later on. Just a way to generate money. Uh, the fourth choice is mixing paints. Now remember, you really can't pick up green, orange, and purple. You usually have to mix them. Very rarely is one of these big tiles going to come out. So what you do, using your big blind here, you can determine what paints will mix, and you have to turn those types of paints in to get those blocks in exchange. And if you put, for each apprentice you put here, that's two extra mixings you can do. So I can make two oranges or two greens or a green and an orange, it doesn't matter what it is, but you can mix two different paints. And of course you mix up to six paints at one time, depending on how many apprentices you put there. So paint mixing. The last one is send some apprentices to go to the theater. Now, why would you want them to go to the theater? Because the theater will make them happier. So remember earlier, I was down here, green was right here, uh, blue stayed up there and yellow was up one. Let's say that blue says, you know what, my guys are okay, but I'm gonna put two of my apprentices right there. Well, that's gonna, they're gonna go up four on the happiness track. One, two, three, four, yay! He's gonna get an additional apprentice for the next round. So you see how that works? And also for red, red may be the one that needs to put two on there. One, two, three, four, get him back to normal. So that's how you get your people happy and start gaining either you know any lost apprentices back or gain that extra one is taking them to the theater. Now, those are the games, that's how every round will go. You'll reveal uh, in the player order determined by wake up status, everyone will play each one of these rounds after that. You know, it's determined again who picks first, and you keep going round and round and round. Now, at the end of the game, uh, when you get down to six or less tiles here in the cathedral, then everyone is going to flip over their board. And if you look here, the theater action is gone. It was here, right here, and now it's an extra cathedral action because the pressure's on to get this theater uh, cathedral done. You can put maybe one there, and maybe if you need to mix some extra paints, before you can paint another tile, put some more there. So it just gives you an additional option because you have to do it in this order. Uh, so I like that because there may be the last, you know, maybe the last round and you're like, no, I need to, if I could mix some paints and then go back here, that'd be great. Well, now they added that extra action and this is during in-game phase. Once the last tile is removed, then we get to the final scoring. Now, uh, by that time, you'll probably be around this side of the track here. And just because your last place doesn't mean you've lost the game. There are other ways to cash in points. Uh, first off, any paint, any extra paint you have uh, can go over here. This board says, hey, for any uh, combination, if you can uh, put in a blue, red, and white, for each one that you can put in, you get an extra two victory points. So let's say yellow uh, had two of those he could do. So he's gonna go up one, two, three, four, and now he's third place, that's great. Now, let's say yellow had some extra cues. Maybe he had uh, two greens and an orange. Well, as you see here, he can turn uh, one each of those for a point each. So that's three extra points there. Yay! So I cash those in and go up one, two, three. But in addition to that, I actually had these three put together. If I, mix, if I put them together and submit them to the altar there, I get an additional six victory points. So now here I'm really rolling. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now all of a sudden, yellow is in the lead. But wait, there's more ways to get victory points at the end. You can cash in all of your coins here. And let's say that blue had six, and he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, he just missed it. Oh, he was right there close. But let's say if he tied with him, he could jump right ahead with him and win the game. So even at the end game, you may be last, but if you have a lot of paint left over or a lot of coin left over, you can start cashing those suckers in and gaining additional victory points at the end because maybe someone beat you to paint all these tiles and you have all this paint and you don't know what to do with it. And just as I said that, I realized I made a mistake. <laughs> these are actually worth 
uh, a half point. So you actually need two coins to equal one victory point in the game. They also give you this nifty neato board if you want to put all your ones, fives, and tens because there are ten coins, ten dollar coins in here. Uh, so if you want to have a board to have them all there, they provided that for you. So there are different strategies here on you know how you play the game, but the person with the most points wins. Now, this is the base game. Let me get to the 11. Yay, 11 expansions that they have for this, and they're all mini expansions. Uh, before I do that though, there is this uh, little player for two players. This is Leonardo. Uh, the game comes with a way, if you wanna play with a ghost player here, he will be your ghost player, and you can move him, and it'll tell you what actions he will take each round. So that's just a marker for a, a variant play there. But that's not one of the many expansions I was telling you about. These are the many expansions here. The first one is simply called the portraits. And what you're going to do, you have A, B, and C cards here, and you're going to place them A, B, C right here. And they are basically just different paintings that if your guy goes to paint them, he will get extra bonuses uh, during the game that they can cash them in. So if you don't need the money, but you want to have different bonuses here, like being able to move the bishop or gain victory points or get extra paint and money, uh, you can do that by, you know, just basically painting that one and you take that one off the board. So this makes even paint, this makes even getting money here uh, a little bit more important going first because whoever goes first gets to choose from the A, B, and C painting here and see if they want one of these special powers. And the last person would, if, they, if all these three uh, portraits got picked, then the last person would be stuck with just getting three coins. So it makes this area a lot more important. And that's it. That's it. Uh, now, if you don't know what all these symbols mean, the book get, easily gives you uh, what each one means and what you can do with that card. So the second expansion is called the Bishop's Request. Now, as you see, I moved all the color boards off this uh, uh, board here, and I put in these little slides here, these little tokens here. And basically, what you need to do is you need to fulfill the Bishop's Request here. He may be asking for three different kinds of paint or three different coins. In exchange, he's going to give you victory points, and if you look on the back, he's going to give you income. And in this, in this choice here, you get a color of your choosing. Uh, each one comes with something, but usually it's just income, additional income, and a color is what you're going to get. Now, you're thinking, oh no, well that's kind of awful. Where do all my paint cubes go that I had to pull off? Well, they actually give you this in the big box, and it is just beautiful here, where you can put all of your colors in here. Now, there's a brown and a pink, which is used in another mini expansion, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But if you're not playing with that mini expansion, you want to use this board anyway, they gave you little pot lids to cover it up. How cool is that? All right, so that is the second uh, mini expansions, the uh, Bishop's Request. The third expansion is just called Special Blend Colors. What you're doing is you're adding the colors pink and brown to your color palette here. And so, again, like earlier, where I had those lids over it, you could put the brown and pink there if you're playing with the Bishop's Request still mini game. And what you're gonna do with that, it's gonna, it comes with these additional cards that lets you know, hey, uh, purple and red make pink. Now that doesn't look pink to me, that looks purple again, but that's pink, and orange and green make a brown. So you would hand these out to each player. It's just additional ways to let them know uh, how to mix for pink and brown. Also, you're going to, before you set the board here, you're gonna shuffle in some of these tiles that have, you know, there's three pink, three brown, and one pink and brown. Look how much that's worth, 24 if you can get it. And so you're gonna shuffle these in, and so some of these will not, you know, some of these tiles here, the base tiles, won't be in the game. Some of the special tiles will, so it gives you more points, but it also makes it more difficult, and it makes mixing a lot more important. Now, uh, at the end of the game, they even have this little token that you can conveniently place right here that will also tell you, hey, if I trade in pink or brown, I'm gonna get victory points. Three victory points for each pink I put in and five victory points for each brown. But as the infomercial says, but wait, there's more. The fourth mini expansion is just the wishing well. What you do is you just put this over to the side here. And as you do that, you're gonna take out, uh, you're gonna shuffle these little wishing well cards, put them here. Each player is going to get three little wishing pennies. That's how they're gonna start with. Any additional wishing pennies will go up here. And what they can do during the market phase, uh, they put these little wishing pennies on their 
board next to the market. They can put one or two. They can't put more than two, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, any player who goes in there may take their wishing penny and throw it in the wishing well. Plunk. You flip it over and look, it's an underwater gold token. That is so cool, I think. All right, so a very simple idea, but just very cool that they have the, you flip it over and they're underwater coins here. And then you get to take one of the wishing well cards. Now the book tells you what each wishing well card does. Uh, some give you special abilities on moving the bishop, mixing colors. Uh, this, this one gives you extra wishing coins too. And so, there you go, there's another one too. Get you extra, extra wishing coins. Now, you can only throw up to two coins in the well per round. So if the first player grabs two and throws two coins in the well, that's it. No other player can use the wishing well. If they brought pennies, they cannot throw them in. So basically, they just have to wait till the next time. So another advantage for going first in the game is getting to that wishing well and getting some of these cards. Now, at the end of the game, these can be cashed in for one penny. So they're actually worth one victory point at the end of the game if you're playing with the wishing well expansion. Expansion number five is called the Leaf Gold. And what you're going to do is you're going to add another little separate tile uh, to the edge of the board. You're going to fill it with these gold uh, leaves on it. And what you're going to do, you're going to use these for painting. Now, how it starts, it starts in the market phase here of how you get them. What you're going to do is you're going to replace the two and the three and put this basket out there as well over the ones in the the market like so. You can also put the basket, doesn't really say, but I just put it right there. Now, what this is saying is, if I was to buy this particular tile here, or this particular paint tile here, it would come with one gold leaf. And so I would just take a gold leaf from the player board here and take it with me. Over on three, I would get one gold leaf if we got here, or if I didn't get anything, I just wanted to pick up, I can pick up two gold leafs over off the thing. I won't pick up any paint, but at least I'll get some extra gold leaves. Now, why would you need gold leaves? Well, when you're painting the cathedral, uh, the bishop is going to want a particular color, you know, extra decorated, probably with some gold leaf around it. And how you're going to choose that color is you're going to take each one of these color tokens and throw them in a bag. And you're going to randomly select one of these six colors and you're going to place it on the basket. That'll let everyone know, hey, this is the color at this on this round of what the bishop wants to see, you know, gold leaf around. So let's say it was red. Red was the one. So you'd put the red token right there to remind everyone if you're painting on any square where there's some red, that's going to give you extra points if you turn in a leaflet. So for instance, let's say that blue wants to color here, purple, red, and blue. Well, because red just happens to be the uh, bishop's favor for a leaf right now, he's going to cash in one of his gold leaves. When he does that, he's going to get extra bonus points. One extra, extra victory point regardless of where the bishop is. However, if the bishop's right next to him, he's going to get two victory points in addition to painting all this. If the bishop's now, on him, he's going to get three additional side, victory points and you're going for just putting to be down gold glazing leaves. in stained really glass windows. The and they have when it comes some tokens to here, leaf. some stained glass window that tokens that you're going to place fantastic. all up here on the board. Now you're going to leave this one blank to place the next one in and they're all going to shove down each time someone buys or picks up one of these for any cost. As you see, the cost for picking up stained glass, anything in, over here is worth three coins, this would be worth two coins, that one's worth one coin, and whatever's in this slot can go for free. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out some of these little glass beads uh, for each round, and you're gonna pull out enough as there are uh, for uh, two glass beads for every one player there is in the game. So in the course of a three player game, you pull six of these out of a black bag. It'd be, you know, one of these black bags that we pulled out from the last expansion there. And so you would pull them out and then you would put them in their designated area on the board. So for instance, any blues and yellows you picked out of the bag would go here. Any reds and greens would go here. As you see, blues and yellows are worth one coin. Uh, to buy a red or a green is worth two coins. Now, to help you decide when you're going to go there, you're going to actually have this little slide here, and it's going to go right over your player board in one of these five spots. So let's say I didn't want to go to the theater, I could place it over here. Now if you see, I already have two Meeple characters already on there. That means I get 
two people automatically that are going to go to the glaziers and buy some stained glass. If I want to add a third one, I would just put one at the bottom of the tile and as much as three can go to the stained glass. It's nice. They Actually, if you play this, it's almost like gaining two extra apprentices. And so anyway, as you go to the glaziers, you're going to pick up one of these tiles or one of these for the prices that are given there. And it doesn't matter what time you woke up, the price is the same for each player. Now why you would need that is there are certain areas on the board, as you can see, that require stained glass windows installed. So if I work on this tile, I must also put a stained glass window up there. So hopefully I've been able to pick one of these and any one of these will fit in any one of these corners here. But to be able to paint on any of these next to a stained glass window, you have to paint and put in the stained glass as well. Now don't worry, these also give you additional victory points in the game depending on how hard they are and how expensive these are. Of course, things with red and green in it is going to be more expensive than just yellow and blue. Now what happens if you play something like, look at this, I have a blue, red, and yellow. But let's say I didn't have a yellow to play. Well, I'm going to make six points minus two because I didn't have a yellow. If I didn't have a blue, it's this much minus four. If I didn't have a red, well, it's not worth putting together, is it? That's six minus six. I just got zero. But at least I got to paint maybe that tile, which is what I wanted to do. And if a stained glass has green and you don't have it, it's minus eight. So you definitely want to make sure you have all the uh, glass beads appropriate to fill in these stained glass windows or you're going to suffer a penalty. Now, once someone picks any of these stained glass windows, you'll pop another one in here and slide it all down so that any ones that were here in the two go to one, any ones go to free, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, at the end of the game, if you have any extra beads, you can also cash one of each color in for one victory point. As you see, I already put out the altar token here. It says one plus for each one. Now, you can only do it once. That means the total maximum points you can have for stained glass is four. So you could put one of each color and each player can do this and it's over here where the end game board is. And that is the sixth expansion. The seventh expansion is called the scrolls. What you're going to do is you're going to shuffle these cards up. You're going to give one a silver and a gold to each player. What this does, it gives them some extra motivation to paint certain tiles in certain areas on the board. As you see, the arrow pointing down is the front of the building there. So it can kind of tell you where you want to build. Now here's the thing. Whenever you want to play these, these are going to give you additional victory points in the game. So for instance, I want to paint right up top here. Now let's say that all the other players have painted all of these and that's the only one that remains. Well, that's a three pointer. Who would want that? Well, I would because this is one of the tiles I got. So if I'm able to paint that one and remove it, then I can say, okay, here and play this card. Now when I play this tile, I'm going to get four victory points for every tile that's already been painting, painted regardless of whether I painted them or not. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, that's 20 points right there that I got. But wait, there's more. You see, I also had the one when I got my scrolls here. I also got this one. Oh, look, that one and that one make a cross. Now what happens, let's say that three is still there and all of these have gone away too, all right? Well, then I can score double the points. Now if you do that on a corner or you know where two of them intersect, well, you're only going to get three for the second one. So I only get, if I got four across here, I get three victory points for each one here. Now, that could get me some big bank in this. Now, of course, what if there's a few still left here, maybe one left here? Well, then what I'm doing is I'm just getting one, two, three, four, sixteen there, and uh, three, six there. So that'd be 20 points there that I would get. But you can cash these in. You have to determine when you want to do it. If you wait too late, those areas could be clean. If they're clean, then you basically lost any extra bonus points you want. But in the scrolls expansion, it basically gets you to go to different areas where you usually wouldn't, but because you're going to get bonuses for clearing out these ones here, then uh, you will get uh, extra victory points in the game. Now, one thing I forgot to mention here, on any one of these, once you clear it, you need to make sure the bishop is somewhere on that row. He doesn't have to be next to you, but he has to be on the road that you're counting victory points for. If he's not there, you're not going to get the victory points. So you may have to pay a couple of coins, move him up there, then paint that, and then play this card and count up whatever victory points you get. And that's the mini expansion for the scrolls. 
Now the eighth mini expansion is called the Bales. Now what it is, the bishop is actually uh, asking for uh, charity uh, to buy a bale, and you're going to give him that, hopefully. Uh, you're going to randomly select, and there's tons of these little bale cards. You're going to shuffle them up, play them on the board like so. And there's going to be, you know, up to four, depending on the number of players here. And you're going to get to choose what you want to buy. So if I spend 10 coins, I get one for eight victory points, or seven coins, five. Now the thing is, you're not going to add these on the big track here. You're adding them on the little track here, and it'll be at the end of the game. This is a game-ending strategy here. So the more you're buying these bales, people won't be able to keep up during the game. There's so much going on. At the end of the game, when you're adding up additional victory points, like right now I have 13. If I look on this track, 13, I'm already up to here. So I'm guaranteed one victory point here, regardless. As you see, the further you go along, you're guaranteed additional victory points. Up to five, you get plus 31 in these bales because you've donated so much money, the bishop is so happy for you. But as you add it up, the person with the most victory points, as you see here, gets 10 additional victory points. Second place gets six, three, and one. Now to donate money for the bales, what they gave you is an extra sleeve here per player there. And what you do, you would cover it up, just like some of the other expansions, you cover it up here, and it automatically gives you one person. Now you cannot send more than one to donate. You can only send one donation, but that's a free meeple turn. And you just cover it one of your turns, and you can go pay for the bells. And that's the bells expansion. The ninth expansion is called the Wall Fresco. And what you're going to do, you're going to have this wall here, and you're going to cover it with all of these tiles, these little brown tiles, all across this uh, board here. It's going to be put over to the side. And what you can do, if you just have extra paint, maybe I just have an orange paint. I just want to get rid of it. I can, and again, they give you these little slides so that you can, you can put it over your little player board, any action here. And as you can see, you only go there once and you'll put a person there. And that means you're sending them to go paint on the fresco wall. And so when you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever tile of whatever paint, either green, orange, there's purple in here, there's other colors, and as you see on the other side, they kind of flipped it over. You would flip it over, and this is going to give you paint income or, you know, any extra bonuses. Uh, it could give you uh, maybe a plus four uh, victory bonus like some of these do. I'm trying to look at some of these. Yeah, here you go. Uh, plus four points, and you get purple income. So just like uh, the bishop's uh, favor cards, where you could be getting some paint income as well as some regular income. You can also get that as well when you're going to paint the fresco wall. And that's the ninth mini expansion. The tenth mini expansion is called the Medico. And as you see here, this is where uh, some of your players are going to get sick. What you're going to do is you're going to put a bunch of these virus tokens right here. This is where the outbreaks will be. Look at that little devil. The, the sickness is upon us here. And you're going to load down here all these little black little meeples. Now, as you notice, they are just like your healthy meeples, but they are sickly ones. And so what you're going to do in this game is uh, every round, after everyone sets and says where they're going, then you're going to reveal one of these circle tiles. And you could be going anywhere. Maybe if you went to the mixing, anyone there is going to get a sick person. Oh no. Or the market or the uh, cathedral or just going to make some extra money painting. Or this one says, hey, whatever the last one was, it's that one again. <laughs> so I mean, it is just, so just when you thought, oh, there's only two, there's only two of each in here. So it can't be a third time. Nope, it could go back to that one again. So what you're doing, if you have a sick meeple, you're gonna replace him with one of your healthy ones. So you're gonna put your regular color here and then you're gonna grab one of the black ones and that's who's gonna be working for you. Now, a sick apprentice is really no good. They actually give you these little player aids to help you out and tell you what sick apprentices do. They cannot go to market. They may not go to the theater. And it isn't interesting that of all these cards, the theater isn't one of the places you can get sick. So it's kind of cool that they made the theater a little bit more interesting to you and enticing you to go there because you're going to ensure the sickness will never hit the theater for some reason. I guess those people are very healthy there. But anyway, when you have a sick apprentice, you cannot put them to go to the theater or go to the market. If they go to the fresco, they may not be around the bishop. As you see, they can't get the extra victory points because the bishop doesn't want to be around a sick apprentice. If you take them to paint something they, and to get coins, they actually have to give up a color. And actually, there's a little tile here they made that you would place 
over the other one showing that, hey, if it's a sick apprentice, they have to pay a color and then you get the coins. And so you just place it over there if you're playing with this expansion. Also on this, if you go to mix paints, instead of two, you can only mix one if you have a sick apprentice. Another awful thing about this is if you are playing on this board and you have a sick apprentice there, you probably don't want to put a healthy apprentice going there with them. Because guess what? The virus will spread and you'll have two sick apprentices. And that can happen. So a sick apprentice has to work alone as well. Unless you just have to get that extra money. And remember, uh, sickness spreads, so it'll spread to one to the other. So that really sucks. How do we get rid of these sickly apprentices? Well, there's plenty of ways to do that in the Medico expansion. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take a bunch of tiles and you're going to shuffle them up and you're going to shift it, put them here in these little stacks. And every round, besides the first round, before anyone gets sick, you're going to put out four medicine balls. And you're going to randomly select them and put them here. Now, wherever they go over, that's how much the price is. Three, two, two, and one. And anything that doesn't get used that round gets discarded over here, and you're going to draw four more and place them out here. And there are four different types you can have. Uh, three of them are healer, healing elixirs, which are green, and one is red. It's uh, raspberry juice is what it is. Now, what these three do, this one can heal one sick uh, painter, apprentice. This one can heal two. Now, you don't get change if you're just healing one, and you, and you use this token, you don't get changed. Say, okay, give me one of these instead. No, this one, it just heals one. It can heal up to two. This one can heal up to three apprentices because they will get sick. And this one, well, all this does is improve the master's mood. Man, he's ticked off that everyone's getting sick around him. Everyone is sickly and dying. So what you do, if you drink, if you drink the red potion, if you bought that, they're going to go up another one on the happiness track. So at least they're happy while everyone is dying of disease. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how the 10th expansion goes, the Medico. I forgot to mention there is an automatic way to heal your employee. Uh, if you picked the 8 o'clock spot and you're at a plus one, you can automatically exchange back to the board and then select the color of your healthy meeple and put them back on the board. But that's only if you choose to have them sleep in and rest up and get better. Now the 11th and last mini expansion is basically, they call it a queenie, which I guess is this queen games who did this. I guess it's like a really mini game. It's basically called the bishop's favors. Uh, different from the bishop request, uh, where you're uh, getting these here. Uh, what you're doing is you're putting these little bishop icons on each one of the tiles. Now whenever they paint that certain section of the fresco, what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and as you can see you can give you paint and give you coins. It can give you uh, victory points. There's a victory point in there. Uh, so it can give you different things in the game. And that is fresco with all its 11 mini expansions. Final thoughts. What do I think that you got to get this? You got to get this game. It's amazing. It's amazing. I uh, I played this at BGG Con, and uh, wow, wow is all I can say. Now that may seem like a lot of mini expansions, but to be honest, it's not that many. I would start off by playing the base game and then sprinkle in the first three expansions, then play again, sprinkle in the next three, and so on and so forth. Eventually, you'll have them all going. It will not seem overpowering. Now there is one other piece in the game. It's called an extra reserve board. I have no idea what it's for. The only time it ever mentions this is at the end. It says, here, you can put it right here on the board. It's an extra reserve board. Reserve for what? <laughs> I, I don't know. But, I mean, hey, they gave you an extra piece uh, for your board game. But this board game put Queen Games on the map for me. Uh, I am a big Queen Games fan, not just because of this, even though I think this is their uh, a masterpiece, a masterpiece. This is uh, this is probably their best game of, 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 mine, of theirs that I love. But when I played this game at BGG Con, I sat back and went, oh my goodness. And I saw the expansions. We didn't play with the expansions at first, but then I saw them. I saw they weren't that hard at all. At first, it looks very confusing. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to understand all this. Simple. Super simple. Each little mini expansion is what they are. Just add-ons to the game, and they're all worth it. And they just enrich the game. The, the game looks beautiful. It's very colorful. And it is super, super fun to play. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Queen Games makes games that are 
fun to play. Uh, people make fun of them for not really having that much theme. This one has tons of theme, I think. But a, a lot of their games, I really love. Once I got into Fresco, I was like, okay, what else is out there? Uh, this is probably, it, it is one of the best games I got to play at BGG Con this year. And I just, dad gum, adore this game. Should you get the big box, the big box edition? Yes. You should. Instead of having to track down uh, the big box, the, the regular edition comes with expansions one, two, and three. And then they have other boxes that carry the re rest of them. I think it's like three other ones. But the thing is, though, go ahead, save the money, get the big box, thank me later, send me Christmas cards thanking me for telling you about Fresco. That's how much. I love this game. All right, gamers, that is all the time I have for now. I'll see you next time. Until then, game on.